Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to show you the round 4 game from Versar where I faced uh, a lower rated opponent but a very dangerous opponent. She played a Fide Master in round 1 and they either think she, she beat him or drew him but in any case she was completely winning. Uh, so mm, she's a very dangerous player despite her low rating. I didn't know what to expect against the London. I was still going to play the London against her because I couldn't really prepare there weren't too many games online so I played d4 and unfortunately for me we got the boring variation which I covered a few videos ago so after knight of 6 e3 e6 c5 c3 bishop d6 bishop g3 and queen c7 uh, now a far more common way to play is with knight c6 of course and getting into the main lines but queen c7 basically says well I'm going to play e5, there is nothing you can do about it. Uh, there is a way to try and avoid it after e6 to play knight f3 and then c5, c3, bishop d6, bishop g3 and now if they play queen c7 you can go knight e5 and try to meet knight d7 or, or, or knight c6 with f4 but that's dangerous because of c4 and black gets an interesting poor majority on the queen side so that's i don't really want to go into that so after queen c7 i played what i what i usually play and we get this position which i've had once in a tournament game as i said a few games ago and after that game i did prepare some more for this so i was prepared a bit better luckily for me and i actually looked at an idea which happened in the game so bishop d6, queen d6, castles and e5. You have to take this, so takes, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, knight of 3. This is all very normal. I played instantly. I had an hour and 35 minutes on the clock at this point. So I basically played all of my moves instantly. You can go queen e7 or queen c7. She played queen c7, which is okay. I think queen e7 should be the best move. Now pawn to h3, uh, this simply prevents bishop to g4, meaning that she is going to have to spend some time playing b6, which, which she did. And I played a4 again instantly. And the idea is uh, I want to try and put some pressure on her queen side and create some weaknesses. For example, uh, if a5 is played, which I think is the best move, then I could play bishop b4 straight away. And if this is taken twice, uh, like this, then I can play rook b1 and try to put pressure on this pawn. But she played bishop to b7, and now I could play a5, but she doesn't really have to react, so I played queen to c2. Now, queen c2 is the idea I was talking about, uh, and this involves a pawn sacrifice from black, if black wishes to go for that. And it's very interesting. Unfortunately, I don't think it works. Uh, the engine says this position is equal or should be equal. Uh, and there's an attacking idea for black here. So if you want, you can pause the video here and try to find a pawn sacrifice which starts an attack. And she did go for it. She played d4. Now, obviously, when the queen is on c7 and I play queen c2, this pawn is pinned, so I can just take the pawn. In exchange for that, she gets to double my f pawns and start an attack, of course, creating a weakness on f3, creating a weakness on h3. And luckily for me, I still have a pawn on e3. If there's no pawn on e3, then knight h5, knight f4 ideas, and the position is much more dangerous. But here, there's actually a way to keep black pieces at bay and start a counter attack very quickly. So, I, I, as I said, in between this game and the last time I had a position similar to this, I actually looked at this idea. So cd4, the pawn cannot be taken. Bishop f3 is forced. Gf3, and now if queen b7, for example, then simply bishop e4, and white should be a clean pawn up, uh, simply because I can play rook d1 later and start pushing my d-pawn, or I can just exchange on c5. So queen d7 is the only move. Uh, and queen d7 threatens to, to, to take here and to take here. So seemingly getting the pawn back. But tactically there is a way to defend everything and that's bishop f5. And after queen d5 putting pressure on, on f3 
you simply go bishop e4. And <coughs> this, according to the engines, again, is, is equal. There's only one move, bishop to g5, otherwise I, I win the exchange. I should mention one more idea, which the engine actually prefers to this, which is dc5. And after queen f3, c6. And this is a dangerous passed pawn, but I don't think it's going to be going far uh, anytime soon. And in the meantime, I if I lose the h3 pawn, then anything could happen. So I was aware of this and I saw it, but I didn't want to go for it. So I played bishop e4, queen g5, king h2, and rook a to c8. And uh, rook a to c8 again doesn't work. Now she's threatening to, to simply win, win the pawn back because my queen is pinned. But tactically it doesn't work. I just go rook g1. Now if she takes, uh, I can just take the queen because my bishop is defending uh, my queen. So queen h5. Okay, again, the same threat. But again, all of this had to be calculated before queen c2. I have an, an intermezzo bishop to f5 and this now basically forces her to either uh, relieve the pressure on, on d4 by moving the rook away from the c file or to undefend her rook which again removes the threat of, of, of cd4 so if she plays rook c to d8 for example then she's no longer attacking my queen so i can i have several options i i, I can play bishop to g4 which i think is the best move and after knight g4 for example fg4 queen g6 i can just take and after fg6, this is hanging, this is hanging, but I should still be slightly better, I think, after dc5 and, and rook f2 and rook g2. Uh, because I'll have a weakness to target on c5. Not that this is winning or anything, but I, I would prefer to be white here. But she played rook c7, which is a more human move. Uh, and now white is a clean pawn up and there is no attack. I played rook g3. There's an interesting idea which I didn't even consider and it's it's about making the black queen slightly uncomfortable and, and that's pawn to f4. Now this seems very counterintuitive, uh, not defending the pawn but moving it away and after g6 for example, rook g5, uh, queen h4 and simply rook a to g1, maybe rook d8, now b4. This seems very interesting. The, the queen is misplaced. But I played rook g3, which is okay. g6. Uh, and now I can play rook d1 or rook g1. I wanted to start a counterattack, so I played rook, rook a to g1. I can go rook d1 and start pushing my pawn, basically. But rook a g1 is okay. King h8, uh, threatening to, to take my bishop. So bishop e4. And she played queen h4. Uh... Yeah, after, after queen h4, I, I made a mistake. Uh, the best way to play this position, which is going to be a recurring theme, is to play b4. Obviously, the, the, the pawn is pinned and I'm threatening to win the pawn. So, she doesn't have that many options. Uh, if c4, then, then b5 and this pawn is going to drop eventually. Uh, moreover, uh, since she played g6 and her king is on h8, there are always ideas on this diagonal. and. All of a sudden, her king is very unsafe, and I'm a pawn up, and she's inevitably going to lose another pawn uh, eventually. I can also go rook d1, uh, and after, for example, rook fc8, d5, again, just trying to push my pawn. But in this position, I played d5, and I, I wanted to open this diagonal up, this seemed like a very natural continuation to me. Uh, just trying to put pressure on her king. I mean, if I can get away with this and not lose a pawn, that seems fine. Uh, unfortunately, there's a way to sort of equalize. She can play rook e7, and this isn't threatening to win a pawn, even though there's no other way to defend. Because if I don't do anything, let's say, let's say I do this, she cannot take because I have uh, rook to g4. And after queen h5, I can just play fe4. But after rook e7, I don't think I'm going anywhere. 
I, I, I don't know. I mean, I could still play queen to c3. I would have played queen c3, I think. Pinning the knight and then trying trying to play rook to g4. But this seems like the most annoying way for her to continue, I think. Just trying to eventually take here. But she made a mistake. Uh, she played knight e4. And according to the engine, white is plus 3 now. Or plus 4 even. Uh, the knight is a good defender, that's the first thing. The second thing is, my bishop isn't really doing anything. I don't think I'll be sacrificing queen g6. And it just weakens the king. So there are two options. Uh, I took with the queen, which is a mistake. Uh, because I'm the one attacking and my pieces are placed perfectly for an attack. I really should take with the pawn. This is much better. And for example, if rook e8, uh, trying to attack the pawn, then just rook g4, queen d8, and maybe rook f4, and just starting to put pressure on her position. Uh, with two rooks and the queen on the board, I obviously have much better attacking prospects. So, And also this pawn isn't as weak. What happened in the game is still okay, white should still be winning, uh, and there is no way to decline the queen trade, basically. She, she cannot really play queen h5. Because if queen h5, I have rook g5, and after queen h6, I have queen e5, winning the rook. So after queen e4, she, she has to take, and f e4. And <coughs> I thought this should be an easy endgame. Uh, after what she did, it, it should have been an easy endgame. She made a mistake here, played rook e8. There's a good move here, which I didn't even consider, and that's rook e7. It seemed pretty stupid not to involve the other rook in the game, so I think rook e7 is a very hard move to find. The point is that after f3 defending the pawn, you can play f5. And what do I do here? Uh, if, if e f5, then g f5, and maybe f4, she can just play rook d7. Eventually, this pawn is going to drop, and I don't think I'm better at all. And after f5, if I play rook g5, which seems to be the best move, then f4, f4, and again, this pawn should be weak, and I, I don't think I have anything here. After what she did, rook e8, then f3, if she plays f5 now, which she didn't do, then e5, and rook e3, obviously, I can just play fg6. So this... This seems much better. But she played f6. And I played rook g2, king g7, rook c1, uh, king f8, and b4. Again, if c4, then b5. Uh, she played king e7. And here, I think I should have exchanged uh, on, on c5. So if I take, she, she takes with the pawn, I, I would guess, and, and then rook c4. Uh, she's gonna try to get her king into e5, but I can prevent that with my rook on c4. So, for example, if king d6, then, then f4. And after... yeah, but f5 is still a problem. Yeah, because now she takes on d5 with tempo. So, I guess I have to allow her king into e5 in this case as well. But after b4, king e7, I played king g3. I'm just trying to centralize my, my king, and she played king d6, and here I blundered. Uh, here I played a move which, if you showed me this position and asked me to find the move in 5 seconds, I would never even consider this move. It's not a good move, and it's not a good move for a reason, but it seemed, uh, after a long thought, I think I thought for, for about 15 minutes, it seemed very sensible to me. To close the position down on the queen side with b4 with b5 and here's why this is a bad move uh okay first i'll try to explain the reasoning behind it uh she wants to play f5 and weaken my center and basically win my d5 pawn and i thought uh i could transfer my rook to the a file one of my rooks then play a5 uh, if she takes, then great. If she doesn't take, I take and infiltrate with rook a6. And sometimes threaten rook c5 if the king is on d6. If the king is, let's say, on, on e6 or somewhere. The downside is, 
which is way more significant. What I told you, the, the upside is, is, is not true at all. It was just so in my mind. The downside is that once her counterplay starts on the king side and in the center, she has a protected passed pawn and she has a square for her king. So I'll just show you one pattern which I was afraid of and which actually could have ca happened in the game. Let's say this is a possible position. I'll just make moves. Something like this happens. Okay, eventually. Now this is a passed pawn protected by the king and my a4 pawn is weak. I'm not saying that's possible in this position, but that's an eventual possibility. <coughs> okay. In the game she played rook e5. And she wants to play f5 and win my d5 pawn, as I said. I played rook c4, uh, rook c7, rook to d2 and f5. And now the game is again completely equal, uh, simply because of b5. Because I gave her too much ca counterplay, but also gave her a long-term asset on the queen side. So, okay, I, I have to take this. So, e5, g5. And now this is an interesting position. Uh, I have two options. I have rook f4 and rook h4. Uh, I went with rook f4. If I go rook h4, then rook d5, rook h6 check, rook e6, rook d5, king d5, rook h7, king c4, and because her king can easily come into my position and take these pawns. Once I take on a7, this should be a draw. Uh, I thought when I was trying to imagine a position like this before I played b5, I thought this was good for me. I thought, okay, this pawn is running or one of these is running. Obviously, if, sh if she doesn't take now, I don't know if she plays here, then, then I can do this and this should be winning. But she always has resources. And in the game I played rook f4, which seemed even better to me, it's not. Uh, she has two options now, taking on e3 or on d5. Uh, if she takes on d5, which I thought was best, and it should be best, then I was going to play rook d5, king d5, rook f5, and king c4. And in this position, black should be winning. So my reasoning was completely wrong. She is much quicker than me. My rook can never go back to defend. This pawn is just going to queen. So I hope that after king takes d5, I would have found the move king to f2. The idea is basically not to take until... B b because I don't want to allow her king into c4. Not to take be before my king comes over. So for example, rook e5 here, king e2. And this should be equal. I mean... She has a passed pawn, I have a potential passed pawn. If I can get my king to, to, to d3, she can always chase me away with c4, because on, on king d3, c4 check, rook c4, she has rook e3 check, winning, uh, I think. So this should have been equal. Uh, hopefully I wouldn't have played rook f5 in that position. But she took on e3, which gives me a lot more play and a lot more time, simply because the king is not threatening to come into c4. So this is a very complex rook endgame, which uh, I don't remember how much time she had. I think I had more time on the clock, but I don't think she was in time trouble either. Excuse me. So okay, I, I took on f5. Uh, and here she played c4, which was her idea after taking on e3. And this seems very dangerous because of this but i can now play rook f6 check which i did play and king c5 should be losing the game straight away if king c5 i can just do this and and now all of a sudden i'm quicker yeah th this should be an easy win uh she played king e5 which doesn't change things really uh i played rook c6 she played c3, and I'll simply rook to d1. Uh, and this is much better for white. After her next move, it's completely over. Uh, she could have kept on playing with rook e8, but that's a very hard move to find. After rook e8, simply king to f2, king f5, and something like rook to d4, just threatening to, to, to take the pawn. If, if here, that's really nothing. If, g8 I, I just have rook g4 
also, yeah, the idea behind rook d4 is to cover on the fourth rank. And her pawn is attacked, my pawn is running. I, I should be better here, not to mention that these two are weak. But in the game she played king f5, and now I played d6, rook to d7, king to f2, attacking the rook, uh, rook e6, and rook d5, check. Yeah, it's, it's all over. Uh, king f4 doesn't really help, uh, because I can play rook to c4 mate, or, or winning the rook. So rook e5 is forced, now I take, take, rook c3, rook d6, and rook c7. And this is, this is a simply winning rook and pawn endgame, uh, just because she cannot defend everything. She played rook h6, uh, now king g3 doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, even though there's a very complicated line I did manage to analyze after the game, which sort of saves the pawn, but I don't need my h3 pawn, I can just take on a7. But if I do play king g3, then, then rook g6, king h4, rook h6, king g4, rook g6, king h5, rook g3, I can now play h4. And after rook f3, I take on a7. And basically, giving up the f pawn instead of the h pawn and winning both of these inevitably means that she has no counterplay at all. So this would have been more precise. Sort of waiting until black runs out of checks and forcing her to go to g3 and pick up the f pawn. But I just took on a7. I, I mean, both are winning. This is just how safe you want to be. Rook h3, rook a6, uh, rook h4. Again, I don't have to wait, I can just trade pawns. It's, there is no chance for a draw here because my passed pawn is protected. Uh, my rook is not uh, behind the pawn. It's not in front either. It's not in front, it's not behind either. It's laterally defending, which means that her king cannot get active and I can just push my other pawn forward. So what happened in the game was uh, rook a7, b6, rook b7, king e3, rook e7, f4 check, king f5 check, king f3. And now her problem is that she can never... Well, she cannot go here or here with the king. Uh, cannot go here. So... Cannot go here. So she can only move her rook away. She played rook d7. I played rook h5 and, and that's it. Uh, king g6 puts up a bit more resistance, I think, but still it's it's over. Uh, she played king f6, which is just... I mean... Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't matter, both are winning. I played king e4. And now if uh, rook to e7, I can just keep on moving forward. So, helping my pawn queen. She played king e6, and this is a win in one move. Rook h6 check, and... I'll just win another pawn, trade rooks, and obviously this is... I don't even have to use my king. <coughs> so, it was a hard game, uh, I would say. Uh, especially this first key position where she traded off on e4, I should have definitely taken with the pawn. That's the, the first big mistake. And then the second big mistake was in this position, and this, this one is way more serious, uh, playing b5. So, I don't know who said that, I think many people have, but recently I heard, I think Ben Feingold say that moves that, uh, or, or Daniel King, I'm not sure, moves that change the nature of the position are either really good or really bad, and I like that as a thought to have during the game, because you can simply ask yourself, uh, because b5 definitely changes the nature of the position significantly. Is it really good or really bad? There is no way this move is insignificant. And in this case, it was really bad. I definitely should not have played it. It would have been much easier, I think. Okay, so this was the round 4 game. Uh, I'll show you uh, my round 5 game tomorrow. That was insane. Uh, absolutely. Uh... Oh, okay, yeah, okay, uh, I don't want to spoil it or anything. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching, hope you like this one, and see you tomorrow. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.